everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Find Me in a Book podcast. We are still in October. We are still doing little spooky romance, you know, rom-com, anything that's like cutesy, spooky. I'm okay with that because not okay with a regular horror or regular scary. Too much for me. Can't take it. Uh, the other day, we actually started watching. I was okay with this, which I suggested it actually. I was like, hey, let's watch some horror movies that were in like the 70s and 80s because that's the only level that I can do. Uh, because these newer stuff, no, it's too real. Like my mind just goes kind of insane and it, I just like start getting night terrors. Like it's a lot. So I have realized from a young age that I don't do well with scary horror movies um it's just too much so uh we did end up watching the omen which i think was from like 1970 something that was a riot uh it was very interesting i think um i think tonight we're watching the birds which that one is freaky but it's kind of silly too because of like all, all everything that uh like the sfx and like just how old it is and it's just kind of funny silly scary you know I'm okay with those um, but we have a couple weeks left we're right in the middle of October and so um, I wanted to do a book that went right along with the theme and I thought that this one was perfect it's Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson I've had this book for um, I want to say maybe like a month maybe two months it was on one of my orders from Book Outlet and I got this one and her other one, uh, I think it's like Love, let's see, With Love from Cold World, which I thought that they were like in a series together. And so that's why I bought them because the covers were very similar. But I don't think they're even in like the same world or universe. I wanted them to be in like the same small town. I thought that would have been really cool, but I don't believe it is. I do have the that one. Um but I don't know, like this one is good and we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Um, I know eventually I will read this other one, um, but I am not pushed to yet. Uh, so we'll we'll see with that. Um, but I have, of course, like I, I said, uh, been aware of these books because of the cover art. It is just so cute and eye catching. And I want to say that it's like pop art. Um, it's like made of all the little dots. I think that's the right term, the right art style. Uh, I'm not, of course, in the art industry at all. Like, I don't really know a lot about it. I know, like, tattoo stuff and tattoo styles because I watch Ink Masters, but that's it. Um, and I am absolutely no expert. So if it's a different type of style, definitely let me know because I'm, I'm, I'm like, pretty sure it's pop art, but who knows. Um, and... This, this book was published back in 2022, so it has been out for a little while. And yes, I have seen it, the cover, a little while. I just never like felt the need to pick it up until then. And I'm really glad that, it, 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 uh, that I did because it was, it was really good. And she, Alicia Thompson, has three books out right now. And she has another one being released in June of 2025, which is exciting. It kind of has the same style of book cover. And so it just, um, it, it makes you think that it's a series, but it's really not. And I kind of, I'm sad about that. But um, let's see. As with this book, it is pretty clean. Like the spicy scale, maybe like a one and a half. Like there is some spice, but it's very much fade to black. Like this is a romance for sure. Like a, a rom-com. It has its funny parts for sure. And, um, it, yeah, it's just very fade to black. Like, the, the spicy scenes are done well. Um, it kind of leaves you wanting more. Um, but it, it was good enough for me. It was good enough for me. Not detailed. Um, but the main thing about this book, which I think it's either going to be a hit or it's either going to be a miss with you. And it all depends on if you like true crime. For me, I love true crime. Like, I am a Crime Junkies, like, OG podcast member. Like, I have loved Crime Junkies. I love listening to any sort of true crime, like, sword and scale. Like, 
all of that. I've loved it for years now. And so when I saw this, I was like, oh, okay, she knows a lot about serial killers. I think I'm going to like this. And I did. And that was one of the main reasons why I did really like this book is because she, our main fe female character, is so obsessed with true crime. And we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. But if you are not a big fan of true crime, then I think that you might kind of get annoyed or not be as interested because this female character, like, her name's Phoebe. She has a way that, like, she's very quirky and her personality has become like the obsession with true crime and with uh, serial killers. Like she's very informative about it. I know a few people think, like I said earlier, that it, it's too much. It's mentioned too much, like the serial killer facts. And she like mentions it with like every sentence, not every sentence, but like every conversation she has with someone, Phoebe mentions like a serial killer or something to do with a crime or like hey one of my worst fears is like being moved to a second location which you know like if you get moved to a second location you're most likely not going to be found and just like things that I, I picked up because I had listened to true crime before that I think people might think it's a, a bit too much but it also shows that Phoebe really knows her information like she it shows her obsession it shows why she chose to do like what she did like so to get into it a little bit to make it more understandable so phoebe is getting her phd and uh let's see so her dissertation is an analysis of the true crime as a genre so it's uh it's based around like the relationship between the author and subject and our fascination with serial killers as a culture so she's working on this dissertation throughout the whole book and so she, uh, she's in it. She lives this. She just knows all this information. She's always been very interested in it, which I think is very cool to see that, hey, she talks the talk and she walks the walk. And sure, it could be too much in this book, but it just really shows that how much she enjoys it and how much she thinks about it. And it just it shows how her mind works. And I loved that. Like, I, I really did enjoy that. Because a lot of the time, like, Phoebe is kind of a pessimist. Like, she uh, she always kind of, like, thinks the negative, but tries, she really tries to think positive. And I thought that was very relatable. It starts out that she arrives at her father's house. So she, uh, her father died. Um, I, I want to say, like, a month before this or a couple months before this. And so she moves to Florida for the summer uh, to get his house ready to sell. So she's planning on working on her dissertation while she's there for the summer. And so the first night that she gets in, she has this big desk on her car, like tied down to her car, uh, because it's just kind of like a, a good luck charm for her, kind of a like superstition type thing, you know. Uh, so she takes it with her everywhere. And so that night she gets in around like 2 a.m. And she's trying to figure out how to get it off her car. And then all of a sudden this guy shows up and she's like, oh, <laughs> OK. So she's thinking of, in through her mind, like, OK, if he's a serial killer, like I need to do this. I need to do this. Like I need to not engage in conversation like she's going through this because when you think about it, it's like two in the morning and this guy shows up asking if you need help. Like, no, thank you. That's a red flag. Like automatically, like stay safe, stay weird, you know, like no and so she tells him like she's very blunt with him like hey I got some pepper spray like you need to back off like I'll figure this out and so then he kind of just like disappears and she's like okay um that's kind of weird and so the next morning um her brother shows up which uh her and her brother haven't been super close just because when their parents got divorced um she chose to stay with her mom and he chose to stay with their dad and so they didn't have like a very close relationship up until like their dad died and they start talking more and he's he lives close by like the brother Connor lives close by. And so they're like, hey, let's spend the summer together. Let's try and get dad's house ready to sell. Like, let's do this. And they're like, OK, great. So the next the ne that next morning, her brother shows up and he's like, hey, what are you doing with this desk? And she like looks out and the desk is by the garage. 
So the guy had taken the desk off the car for her and put it at the garage. And she's like, oh, like, what's happening? Like, who is this? I don't know who this is. And so she's kind of freaking out. And so she, uh, the guy, Connor, or her brother, is like, hey, I'm pretty sure it's the neighbor because they were they were hearing some noises. So she looked out and she's like, oh, my gosh, that's the guy that showed up. And Connor's like, that's the neighbor. And so she kind of keeps watch over this guy for the next couple days. And she's like, oh, my gosh, that's suspicious. Is he a serial killer? Like her mind is kind of like churning like, oh, my gosh, what do we need to do? Like what do like how do I figure this out? And uh, once she starts talking to her, her brother some more, he's like, no, he is the neighbor. He's a really nice guy. He is the elementary school music teacher. Like, he's just a nice guy. And so um, as, like, a couple weeks pass, um, this guy, the neighbor, starts to do, he, like, mows their lawn, and she, like, calls him out and is like, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing this? And uh, she kind of is a little bit a lot, if that makes sense. Like, she kind of, like, really drills into him, like, why are you doing this? Why are you mowing the lawn? Why are you doing this? And he he's like, I just wanted to help. Like your dad couldn't mow like towards the last of his life. And so I would mow for him. And, and so she kind of gets humbled a little bit like, oh, I should probably take a step back. I should probably like be grateful and be welcoming. And so she kind of like takes a step back. And so she, uh, starts to see this guy. So he introduces himself as Sam And so they start to see each other like in passing and everything. And they one night they hear that he's having this party. And so her and her brother and his girlfriend, uh, she's like, "Uh, yeah, we were invited. We were invited. And they really weren't. So they show up and Sam is taken aback. He's like, what are you doing here? And like her brother didn't know that they were crashing this party. And so they go in and it's for uh, one of the teachers that he works with, Sam works with, it's her retirement party. So they crash this party, but her and Sam like start talking some more and start getting along. And there's just kind of that tension. And I really like that. But also he's really shy, which is very sweet, which is probably why he hasn't called her out for things. But as they spend more and more time together, like he is very he is vocal about like his limits. Like he doesn't he doesn't really like true crime. He doesn't want to hear about serial killers. He doesn't want to hear like gruesome things. And so he tells her that. And so she's very respectful of it. And when it does get spicy, like he's ready, like he's open. He's like, I have feelings for you. I want to do this. And she's like, um, I, I don't think that's for me. Like I like we can keep doing this, but not really like have a label on it. And he's like, oh, I don't I don't really like that, uh, which it's really nice to see her growth, like Phoebe's growth throughout the book because she like she heals a lot of relationships in this book as well like she heals her relationship with her brother she heals her relationship with her friend Allison which Allison was her best friend when she was like little and uh like growing up teenagers too and like her Phoebe's dad was like pretty like verbally abusive and would have like these outrage like episodes and just like he had a lot of anger issues and and Allison was aware of it because she uh, she had been over a couple times when he had one of these episodes. And so one night, um, Phoebe kind of makes a joke about um, taking like too many pills or she's going to take too many pills. And Allison actually reaches out to Phoebe's mom and tells her. And so then it kind of it goes back to her and, and she gets in trouble, like Phoebe gets in trouble and like they just a whole big thing happens. And so that's when Phoebe like shuts down and and she shuts Allison out. And that's when the moving happened and she just like cut ties with her. And so she interacts with Allison more that now that she's back and Allison is a librarian and she just seems like very sweet. Like she wants to be friends with Phoebe. Like she wants to understand. She wants to know like how she is like, and, and just have this friendship again. And and it's really cool to see Phoebe start to embrace that and really like because she she embraces Allison's part of the friendship. But it, it's really nice to see her try as well and kind of and try and meet Allison where she is. 
And Allison's very patient. She knows that that Phoebe is kind of like a not as extrovert or she, she's very introvert and has her like her social uh, needs. And so she's very patient. And so then Phoebe starts to recognize that in herself and like, hey, I need to meet her where she is. I need to start trying for this friendship. I need to start reaching out to her. And and to see that change, I really, really enjoyed it. And then the last relationship is with Sam. Like uh, Phoebe has been burned in the past from past relationships and and also how she grew up as well. Like she has some trauma with her parents. And so when anyone starts to get too attached, she's like, no, 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 no. Like I can't do this. And so... And it, it's not a quick growth. And I really liked that. It wasn't just like, oh, decided this, I'm good to go. Like it was growth throughout the whole book that you see her start to embrace these relationships and start to change and start to think about like, hey, maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. Like, hey, I'm actually going to try this instead. And she's able to see the positive outcome from it. And I really, really liked that. And and so she's also, she's working on her dissertation throughout this whole this whole book and so um, at the end, she has she has to, like, defend her dissertation. And she's back in North Carolina because that's where she was doing this. And at that point, her and Sam had, like, broken up. And she's like, I don't want to be alone. Like, I want people to be here for me. Like, I need to be there for them. And so there's kind of this whole cycle that she goes through and and people show up for her and it's very very sweet and she does really well on her dissertation and it just like it's full circle like it it was just so good and you like Phoebe you really do like um I related to her a lot like I really liked her personality um I really liked all of the true crime like serial killer facts like I thought that was so cool and so interesting and um yeah, I really liked Sam as a character. He seemed very cute, very golden retriever. I I really liked that he was open with his feelings and he didn't push things off. Like he was very like, "Hey, I'm in this. If you're in this, like let's let's do this. Like I want to help." Like he was just so supportive of her as well, even though he didn't really like true crime. Like he still supported her and and seeing that friendship and also her friendship with Connor too because Connor like He really wants to propose to his girlfriend. And so he like he has Phoebe help him like plan things. And she's just a very good older sister. And they really start to bond more. Um, It was interesting that they didn't like they mentioned their mom, but like there was no contact with their mom. Like they they didn't talk about her really. Like there was no conversations between their mom and Phoebe like I'm pretty sure she got remarried but there wasn't a lot about that which I thought was interesting and also I really wanted this book to have a little bit more of when Phoebe and Sam like come together again because at the very end that's when they decide to like be together again but I wanted a little bit more to show them together like living together and having this relationship like I just wanted a little bit more like a little snapshot of what their life is like and it it kind of like ended abruptly which I was kind of sad I was sad about overall it was it was really good and with uh I can't even remember if I mentioned the mother sister standard earlier but I I would have recommended this book to them if it didn't have so much true crime because they both don't like true crime information and I think that they would just find it to be too much in there um but I think I I will recommend this to uh Kat because she loves true crime as well I don't think it's spicy enough for her I actually I know that it's not spicy enough for her so I don't know if she would actually read it um but yeah that's the only reason why I wouldn't have it like sister mother sister standard approve like because of the true crime like I just don't think they would enjoy that um but they would enjoy all the other stuff in it so take that as you will um I'm trying to think so I so we just had like book club with uh my family and we read uh the will of the many by James Eilington guys I am really branching out I am so proud of myself uh 
And it has to do with the book club because the book club obviously is not just solely romance books. And so I really like that I have been pushing myself to read these non-romance books for this book club. And I'm really, I'm just, I'm just happy about it. This book was really confusing and it was good at the end. But other than that, I was like, I'm so confused, like who these people are. So it was very good. It was very good. Just a lot there. It was so thick. It, it was too much. So um, this next month we are reading Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. I think that's what it's called. I've heard great things about it. So that one is the next book club, which I'm excited about. And then uh, for next week's episode, I am actually reading the book that the husband bought, I think on our second trip to Book Outlet or sorry, not book outlet, uh, Bookman's. Um, he chooses a book for me every time. And I thought this one was kind of spooky. So I'm going to read it for next week and have him on the podcast. It's called Dead of Winter by Marilyn Ross. It's from like the 1970s, I want to say. Let's see. Uh, 1978. So I'm really excited. Um, to read this it says to dr henry watts whose life story is more thrilling than any mystery yarn and to his attractive wife barbara that's a really weird dedication i don't know so uh i is this saying is this saying this is the 12th book we're we're gonna find out uh it just looks very interesting And I hope it's kind of spooky. We'll see. Uh, So that's going to be next week. And then, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited because I'm finally going to be doing a mini episode. Last week, I was so sick. Like, I could not do a mini episode. But this week, uh, the third book of, like, the Pumpkin Spice Cafe, like, that series, the third book came out last week. And I read it, and it was perfect. And so I'm going to be doing Thursday's mini episode on it. Uh, It's like the Christmas... It's about like the Christmas tree farm. Um, what is it called? The Christmas tree farm. Yeah. From uh, Lori Gilmore. And it was so cute. It, oh my gosh, it was so cute. So definitely stay tuned for that episode. I just absolutely loved it. Um, and then, of course, I'm so bad at social media, like updating everything. So I need to do my TBR, which literally changes every second. You know this. Um, but I'm hoping to do a post in like the next day or so with my upcoming TBR so you can follow along and I need to just so many things I need to be doing but uh, anyways I hope you enjoyed this episode and I do recommend you picking up this book and uh, follow me wherever you are on social media Um, if you're watching this on YouTube definitely follow subscribe give me a thumbs up If you're listening to this on any streaming platform, uh, definitely give a follow, rate, review, all that jazz. It definitely helps me out. And uh, follow me, yeah, on all the socials. So anyways, grateful for you guys, and I'll talk to you next week.